All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling, exciting story of the sea. To refresh your memory with what has happened before, Captain Roy Dalton, who has just received his master's papers and his good friend George Wainwright, have signed on as skipper and first mate of the whaling ship Paul Parrot, owned by Grange and Sons, an outstanding shipping company of New Bedford, Massachusetts. The ship sails in one day, but in the last couple of days, Dalton and Wainwright have been followed by a mysterious Spaniard named Altesti, an agent for another shipping concern down the wharf a bit. They discovered him yesterday spying on them as they were talking to old man Breckenridge, shipkeeper for Grange and Sons, and Sue, sister of Ezra Grange, one of the ship's owners. At the present time, Dalton and his first mate are searching through the town of New Bedford for Altesti's house. Roy, mate, I hope we're on the right trail. Blow me down, George. If we're not, I'll try new trails until I find him. He's up to some devilishness, or he wouldn't have followed us yesterday when we were talking to shipkeeper Breckenridge. Well, if we don't lay hands on him soon, there's no telling when he'll be lurking around some dark corner, shooting at you like he did on the wharf. The swab. If I didn't know that the De Silva Company were fair friends of the Granges, I'd think that he was just operating as their agent to hinder our whaling voyage. But the two companies have always been on pretty good terms. So he must be under his own sail when he sneaks around and spies on us. Well, I don't know, matey. I've been telling you that I sent more than a whaling cruise on this ship, haven't I? What with young Ezra Grange, one of the owners, shipping along, and what with a good class of seamen signed on, and the good shares in the voyage they're getting... There might easy be some other reason than Whalen that might give plenty chance for some lubber to be spying on us. Oh, I'll store that, George. You're too bloom and suspicious. Anyhow, we'll find out what Altesti's reasons were when we get him hooked. You're sure you know where he hangs out? Aye, don't you recall? Breckenridge said Gloucester Street. Avast, this is Gloucester Street. And it's a few squares up the wharf, just as he said. Let's do some asking at these houses here. Aye, aye, Roy. You try that big house while I ask at the tavern across the way. They may know of him there. Be careful now, George. If there's any trouble, call me. Uh, uh, what in the... Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you here, mister. Well, Sonny, that's all right. I'll wager you got the worst of that collision. When a big hulk like me sails into a little dory like you, you're apt to be swamped. It's lucky I didn't knock you down, son. Gee, say, are you a captain? Your cap and all looks like you are. Are you really a sea captain? Why, sure, I'm a captain, son. There's nothing strange about that, is there? In a port so full with captains and seamen of every one of the seven seas as New Bedford. Well, I've seen captains before, but I've never talked to one. Well, I don't know that it's such an honor to talk to a captain. But you must be a stranger to the port of New Bedford if you've never gammed with a skipper. Yes, sir, I am. I just came here today. I see. Then you wouldn't know what I was about to ask you. Well, gee, I might. What was it, sir? I was about to ask if you knew anything of a certain man my mate and I were looking for. Well, I've been on the street all day, Captain. I might know him. Where do you live, son? Where's your folks' house? Well, I... Oh, please, Mr. Captain. I don't know where I'm going to live. You don't know? Blow me down, lad. Are you lost? No, sir. But you see, my folks live on a farm about 50 miles west of here. Then what are you doing in New Bedford without your folks? Have you... Blow me down. I'll wager you've run away from home. Have you? Answer me, lad. Have you run away from home? Yes, sir. Glad you shouldn't have done that. Think how your folks at home will be worried for you. And this is a hard port, lad. There are many rough seamen here. And it's no place for a boy who knows nothing of the life of the sea and has never been away from his parents. Oh, but Mr. Captain, I've always wanted to go to sea. This is no way to go about it. Why didn't you ask your father for permission? He would have let you when you were older, I'll wager. No, he wouldn't. He said he'd never let me ship on any kind of a craft. Then he knew best. You should have obeyed him. But father was a seaman himself a long time ago, and he always told such wonderful yarns about the sea that I've always wanted to follow his life. Aye, lad, but the sea is a hard master. I wouldn't advise you to follow it. There's lots of danger and little pay, and you're lucky if you come out the winner in the end. Now you take my advice and weigh anchor for home. Oh, gee. What's your name, son? Jonathan Obadiah Robbins, sir. <laughs> well, say, that's a mighty big name to stow on so small a craft. <laughs> they usually call me Johnny, sir. Johnny, eh? Well, I think that's better. Listen, Johnny, you take Captain Dalton's advice and go home to your folks. Why, your poor mother's probably crying her eyes out now, wondering where you are. Well, I left a note. Well, that makes little difference. I give you my word, Johnny, you'll be happier if you go home again and maybe take to the sea later in life. 
And Captain Dalton's word is sacred to him, so you can depend on what I say. Did you say you were Captain Dalton, sir? Yes, Johnny, that's the name. Well, just a little while ago, I heard two men talking about you right here. What's that? You heard someone mention my name? Yes, sir. There were two men right in front of this house. And one of them said something about Captain Dalton being away from the ship, and that this was a good time to do it, whatever they were talking about. Blow me down. I'm lucky that I ran into you, Johnny. What do these men look like? Well, I was sitting on that step over there. And one man, the one with a peg leg, I mean. Peg leg? Yes, sir. Hmm. I wonder... And the other, what did he look like? The other one was real dark, and he had a mustache. That was Altesti. I staked my share on it. What did they do then? Well, they seemed to be arguing. Then the dark man went down toward the wharf, and the other one hobbled up the street. There's no time to be lost. Ahoy, George! Wainwright! Ahoy! Avast! I'll be right over! Captain Dalton... Can I go down to the waterfront with you? Johnny, this is likely to be a dangerous business. You'd better stay here. Oh, but, Captain, I helped you trace the man. Listen, I'll go back home if you let me come along. Well, aye, it is then, lad. But keep out of the way if there's any fighting to be done. Here I am, mate. What news? I've had no luck at all. George, this is Johnny Robbins. He's put us on the track of that landlubber Altesti. Johnny, this is Mr. Wainwright, my first officer. Hello, lad. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Wainwright. What's this about picking up Altesti's track, Captain? Johnny here has seen and heard two men talking about me. And from his description, one must be Altesti and the other... Which way did they head off? Towards the wharf. That was some time ago. Batten down my hatch. There's no time to lose. Let's run for it. Avast. They've let the foul parrot slip down the harbor today. She's riding at anchor about a mile down from the wharf. Aye. We were to go down in boats. And board her tomorrow morning. That's right, mate. This would be a fine time for some lubber to board her. The docks are just ahead, aren't they, Captain Dalton? Aye, aye, son. I think I heard a boat. Orlocks. I believe you're right. It's the Grange docks. Somebody's setting out in one of our dories, I'll wager. Look over there. There he is. He's getting into the dory. We only have to run across the wharf. Hurry. Come back to the wharf, or we'll shoot. Make one move for a gun and we'll fire. We're two to one. Come on out of that boat. All right, don't get excited, senores. I come. That's the swab, all right. We thought it would be you, Altesti. What's your intention in making off with one of Grange's dories? I did not think Senor Grange would mind if I borrowed the boat to cruise up and down the wharf a moment. Captain, that's the man I heard talking about you, all right. Aye, I thought it would be. Altesti, we've been looking for you. And here you are, just about to board our ship. Ah, you honor me, senores, by looking for me. But I know nothing about boarding your ship. We want to know why you've been steering so close to our course the past few days. You followed us in everything we did and used a gun on me, if you care to recollect. And we think this is a good time for explanation. Ah, with pleasure, I will. One moment. The little boy. Do I not know him? Why, he's... Let me see. Uh, hey, stop! Help! Now, Captain, use your Ouch. guns if you will. I have the Let boy in front of me. And if you shoot, Ouch. you kill him. I will back up across the wharf. And if you shoot as I go, the boy will be hit. Let me go! Ouch! You're hurting my arm! Joe, Bill scum. When you let that boy go, we'll shoot. You might as well give up now. Maybe I won't let Ouch. go. See, I have a gun too. I hold it over the boy's Ouch. shoulder. If you follow me, I shoot you. If you shoot back, you kill the boy. Adios, amigos míos. <laughs> if we follow him, he'll shoot. And here we are in the open with no casks or rigging to hide behind. Wait till he ducks behind those crates. Then we'll follow. There, he's behind the wharf office. We'll drop on our stomachs and crawl after him. Look out, there's his hand. Around the building. He's gonna shoot. Breckenridge, listen. What's that? Hey, Sue, there's trouble brewing. Those were pistol shots. Oh, look out the window. Who's that running this way? Hmm, that's that Al Testy fellow, and he's dragging a young lad with him. Help! Help! Oh, Mr. Breckenridge, help that him. That I'll do. Come on, hurry. Now, which way did they go? They've disappeared. Disappeared? Where in the world could Al Testy have taken Johnny? What's going to happen? Will Johnny get away from the Spaniard? Will Captain Dalton catch him? What has Dickon, the peg-leg sailor, to do with all this? Be sure not to miss even one of these exciting adventures on the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward. <laughs>